Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Channel 781 News Waltham City Council debrief. Uh, this week in the City Council Committee meetings and the Public Works and Public Safety Committee, there was a discussion of resurfacing Duddy Ave. Um, in the Licenses and Franchises Committee meeting, there was a discussion of who to name the gazebo after on the Waltham Common. Um, there was a special budget meeting having to do with the one bomb AF taking. And uh, also this week, not in the city council, but um, in a special meeting of the Ritzy Award Committee, uh, they responded to the open meeting law complaint that Chris submitted. So we'll talk about that. Um, and I also have some information about trees I wanted to share. Uh, but before I do that, let me introduce my co-hosts. I'm here with Chris Gamble. Hello. And James Krakelis. Hello, everyone. And uh, we'll also continue our tradition of telling you about community events coming up. So we have, as you already know, Pride is on June 4th. Uh, lots happening with that. There's going to be a celebration of Juneteenth um, on the Waltham Common on June 20th, which is the Monday. And the Waltham Children's Business Fair is coming up on June 25th. Uh, it seems like maybe we should have more events than that. So if you know of any others we should mention on our next show, feel free to get in touch with me. And then before we move on to the city council topics, I wanted to mention um, there's a story that we're trying to find out more information on with trees. So back at the end of March, there were notices putting up, uh, put up on several different streets um, saying that the city was planning down on cutting down trees and it totaled about 90 trees. So it was a lot and it referenced that there was going to be a meeting about it on March 31st. So this got posted on social media. There wasn't sort of an official announcement in about the meeting. So at the time I e emailed the tree warden to confirm that there was a meeting because I thought we might mention it here. And other people did as well. And what he emailed back was, yes, there was going to be a meeting, but it had pretty much already been decided that the trees would not be cut down because there had been such a public backlash already. However, he also explained, and I guess he explained this in the meeting as well, um, that his intent was uh, that these all of these trees are an invasive species um, called Norway maple, and they may be the reason that the sidewalks are getting damaged in that area. So his thinking was they're going to research surface the sidewalks and he would like to at that time replace them with more sustainable trees that he already has growing in the nursery. Um, and he was concerned that if he didn't do that, when they fix the sidewalks, they'll damage the root systems of the trees, the trees will die anyways, and then he will have to remove the dead trees, which will be more expensive. Um, so I guess this was explained at the meeting and some people brought up, well, but is there a plan to, to take care of these new trees to make sure they're sustainable? And I guess the, I wasn't there, but for, from what I understand from people who were there, they were told that this wasn't happening. But just last week, there was a notice put up on one street, which is Potter Road, which is in the bleachery um, neighborhood, saying that, yes, actually, the trees are going to be cut down. So it's an interesting story. It seems like there are some good reasons for and against um, cutting down the trees, but it also seems um, like there's maybe a lack of communication going on about it. So if anybody knows more about this, about what the city's overall plan on this is, or anybody who could come on and talk to us about it would be extra good, uh, feel free to get in touch with us because it's interesting to know uh, trees are really important. And, and the idea of having a nursery of future trees, I think, is really exciting. But it seems like there's a lot more to talk about here. Um, so moving on to the City Council Committee meetings. In the Public Works and Public Safety Committee meeting, they talked about resurfacing Duddy Ave. James, can you tell us more about that? There's like a, a quick line item and they were discussing uh, that it had in fact gotten over 50% of the residents signed on as uh, like wanting to pay to get it done. Uh, and that they, that is the threshold for it. Uh, however, one of the things that I believe the clerk brought up was that they had this quoted uh, over a year ago and prices for road work has gone up because of diesel prices and so they're going to be re-quoting that with the public works department and that's about it for the for that that thing but hopefully it can go forward it sounds like it's pretty bad 
Yeah, I used to live literally right on top of it on Brown's Ave, just uh, right next to it. And uh, I don't think it was a year ago. I think this was just uh, the public hearing. I think it was in like November or December, Duddy Ave, um, unless I'm uh, misremembering. Um, and I believe they were getting held up from something else because to even bring this to bring this uh, special hearing forward, you have to already have those signatures in place. So I just think it's interesting that the city can move so quickly on things it doesn't want to do. But even if you can do something like get the signatures to pave a private way, which is almost impossible, it almost never happens. We've talked about that before. Um, even then, it could take over six months for the city to even say, you're still missing things. You're, this, is, this is what you should have done six months ago. Um, so it's just, it's just a shame because it's real, it's a, it's a real success to get all of those residents to agree on one thing. And then the city is still slow as molasses on doing anything. Yeah, you've talked before about how it's really difficult um, to get the, the uh, signatures you need to repave a private road. And it sounds like now they have to restart that process with the new quote, is that right? Oh, that would be awful. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't believe that's the case. Oh, I think, okay, good. Gonna, I think that the price is just going to be higher. So the people who signed on are going to then see that they have to pay more. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I guess people could say no if the price is much higher, but that would suck. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry to hear about that for people on that road. Uh, moving on to licenses and franchises. So a conversation I like... Um, I love conversations about monuments and naming things after people. Uh, so James, can you tell us more about the conversation at the gazebo? Yeah, so uh, Councillor Paz joined the committee as an off-committee member to uh, untable uh, the, a uh, resolution to name something after Virginia Monroe, who was an activist, civil rights activist in the city, I believe co-founder of Watch, I want to say. Uh, but the uh, feedback, I guess, from her family was that they wanted a more public uh, memorial location, and so he, the uh, there had been a, uh, a letter, I guess, sent to the mayor asking her to propose a location, and Paz just uh, opted to propose a location for her to then, you know, say yes or no to, and there was, there was some back and forth on that, but he pitched the gazebo, and uh, it sounds like they're expecting the mayor to attend in a future meeting to discuss this. Chris, do you can you do you have any more background on that? Um, it's just it's just an interesting thing. Who gets named after what in in any city? I mean, there's a long list of dead people in the city of Waltham, um, and there's a long list of monuments. So it's really who gets to be named after what. And again, it all goes back to public pressure. If this if this if this family of Virginia Monroe, which is hard enough and there's enough public pressure to say we want this, um, then that's what happens. But then you also have uh, Joseph Lazaro's family uh, doing the same thing at the same time. So it's tough to say unless unless that person had a real significant, uh, you know, relationship with that monument. Uh, it's pretty much just whatever Whatever hap whatever happens, happens. And a lot of the time it's because people organize. So it'll be interesting to see because uh, it would really like it to see that go to Virginia Monroe, um, who uh, I only met once, but seemed like a very nice person. Um, but I'm sure the families of other people would say the same for them. So we'll see. Okay, thank you. And also, so there was a, uh, in addition to there being a committee of the whole meeting, there was a special meeting of the full council and that was a special budget meeting. Chris, can you explain to us what that was about? Yeah, so that has the mayor coming in to talk about the new 2023 budget. Um, she released it to the uh, city council. Um, I'm sure if I looked hard enough, I could probably find it on the internet, maybe not, and then it's gonna be released soon. Um, and so this starts the process of the finance committee talking to every, uh, every I don't know what, what the right word is here, because I don't follow uh, this well enough, uh, the budget hearings, but it's a multi-week process where they sit down with every single department, every single organization that gets money from the city 
and they scrutinize them and it's usually not not very toxic but uh it could be um for uh, uh no one can say these things um and so this is the beginning of that process it'll be interesting with us if we do any work around that um because it does require us coming in to meetings at different times and rather than just Monday. And of course these meetings were unrecorded. Um, and so it'd be interesting to see if this if this program does anything with that. Um, I would like to have a more laser focus on the budget hearings because they never are. Yeah, I don't usually scrutinize budget stuff that much personally, but I think it would be good to if anyone is in is, that speaks to someone if they want to get involved to reach out to us especially for recording these later meetings. Yeah, that actually uh, relates very much to our next topic. So uh, as we discussed uh, in the past, uh, Chris had pointed out on a previous show that when the Ritzy Award Committee made its recommendation to the city council um, of who to give that award to, it appeared that they'd had a meeting to discuss that that wasn't um announced to the public because chris was following it and he didn't know about it we it wasn't recorded um and so that complaint uh, chris went ahead and made an open meeting law complaint and the complaint was brought up in the full city council meeting it was sent to the ritzy committee and they had a special meeting this week to discuss it so chris can you tell us more about that so yeah this is basically winding down um they, uh, I mean, the city reached out to me. I had a short talk with the solicitor's department. Um, and then I watched the recording of that uh, special meeting, which went unrecorded, but thankfully James uh, was free at the time to sit for an hour. Uh, they talked for an hour about this. And uh, so they, this is what I, what I am willing to admit is this. I'm willing to admit that the city did everything it was required to do and uh and that i was wrong in the date on the complaint itself but both of those things make it worse it's actually worse uh now that this is all coming to fruition because the city is saying that they only need to uh, announce meetings by writ, which is like a paper copy that they put in City Hall uh, in a, on a bulletin board. They're saying that that is the only requirement uh, that they need to do uh, by law. And so I'm going to share my screen for a nice visual aid. City Waltham posted, here's tonight's uh, meeting lineup in Waltham. This all of this means absolutely nothing. All of these uh, on the city's website, all of these committee agendas mean absolutely nothing. All of this, it's absolutely meaningless because all the city council is required to do is to put a writ on a bulletin board and that's it. And that's anything else is just what the just city doing more of and they should be patted on the back. But so, I mean, we, so so last week i talked about how i thought that the week before um that the committee had met at 7 45 when i had left and that something 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 but that actually is not true i learned that from from james attending this meeting they actually met the next day um the whole committee met the next day i had no idea that was happening and so i was wrong i was incorrect in saying that and also on the complaint itself um but i mean how was i supposed to know i had to physically go to the city council to see this writ of a committee that's not even on the same day as it usually is, and not even on the docket on the city's website like it usually is. I was supposed to go on an off day. It's like that's ridiculous, and that and so the city. Uh, if you watch the committee, it, it's like you know they just do a slam dunk on me for an hour about how stupid I am and how I couldn't, how I could not have possibly gotten this wrong, but it's just, you're, that's a failure of transparency, 100%. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I learned a little bit, but it's, it's very disappointing.
Yeah, I agree with all of that. So uh, yeah, um, so just to, to Chris pretty much explained it, but just so it could be clear, what, what we learned is that although the city announces most meetings online, they're only legally required to announce them on a bulletin board. Um, and when James went to the meeting, to this meeting up, uh, where they were responding to the complaint, um, he also saw there a notice for a meeting of the Rules and Ordinances Committee on Saturday that we did not know about because that had not been uh, announced online. So what that means is there's three examples now that we know of where something was announced on the bulletin board and not online, if you include this meeting. Um, where they told Chris it was happening through email, but it wasn't announced anywhere else publicly. So basically, there's there's two tiers of public meetings in Waltham. There's actually public meetings, and there's technically public meetings. There's the ones you want people to know about, and there's the ones where you do the bare minimum to avoid breaking the law. So what this means is Chris was wrong. Chris was technically wrong. They, he, they didn't break the law. Um, but I'm really glad he submitted the complaint because it brought this system out in the open. And because unfortunately, it undermines all of what we thought we were doing um, this year with Waltham data. And I wanted to explain that why that was. I think the, from the counselor's point of view, it must be like, well, why are you yelling at us about how we announce a meeting when hardly anyone comes to the meetings anyways? Um, so I want to explain why, why this is important, which is that there is no complete record of the city council in Waltham. So uh, before the last election, um, there was a post on Reddit where it was an unflattering post about Paul Brasco about something he'd read recently, unflattering from the point of view of Reddit people. And so people were saying, oh, I don't want to vote for him you know, now knowing this, but then other people came on and said, this is really unfair. You know, you're attacking this guy for one thing he said recently, and he's been serving our city for decades, and you should vote him, judge him on his record. You should look at his voting record. You should look up all the things he's done for the community. And I knew because I had been researching stuff at the time that you can't do that. That's a really good point, but you can't do that. There's nowhere you can go online to look up a counselor's voting record. There's no way to get a list of what topics did they discuss this year in city council and where to get a list of that. Um, to find out those things, you would have to spend a lot of time looking through the minutes, uh, but the minutes are not complete in terms of the votes or what positions people took. So you'd have to spend hours looking through videos, but the video is and are not complete because they don't record every meeting. Um, so uh, by uh, recording the additional meetings and by doing these debrief shows, putting transcripts of these shows online, and now what we were planning to do is at the end of the session, do a summary show and talk about what was and what wasn't discussed in the city council this term. And now we're going to have to say what wasn't discussed as far as we know, because there were meetings we didn't know about uh, there, and those are not being recorded. And the other part of this is what we thought was a big success this year uh, in that the city council supported uh, recording all the meetings, or so we thought. Um, but really what the, they hired, a, when the city put out the ad for a videographer, it was for Tuesday nights specifically. And all the discussions about the recording with WCAC was about Tuesday nights. So, all, so basically now all the actually public meetings will be recorded, but the technically public meetings will not. And so the whole time that the council was supporting this idea of recording all the meetings, they knew that they still had a way of doing essentially unrecorded meetings that hardly anyone knew about. Um, and so my concern, so after the election, you know, there were a lot of discussions across the political spectrum. The people who had paid attention to the election were really disappointed because there was extremely low voter turnout. And part of it was because nobody knew what was going on. Nobody knew enough about why this counts, this candidate was better than that counts candidate enough to get motivate them to get out. And that's why we started um, Waltham Data and Channel 781 News. So now it's like, what do we do? Like, do we advocate now the same thing we already advocated for, for them to all be recorded, only do it for real this time? And then we keep going and maybe five years from now, we'll be talking about like Spanish translation or something. Like we need multiple years to advocate for something um, like recording all meetings, which has already been done. That in the first few months of the pandemic, all the city meetings were online. 
The city staff had to do it, just like people at a lot of different companies were asked to make this happen. And they did a great job. I believe it was Joe Vizard, who's now the city clerk, who was who made this transition for the council. And it worked great. And now they're telling us we need to advocate for years and years just to get what we already had. And there's no legal uh, or money reason or technical reason why they can't do this. They're choosing not to make themselves transparent. And so I was disappointed by this meeting uh, where they talked about the complaint because um, they did, spent a lot of time talking about how dumb Chris was, they didn't use that word, but that was definitely the tone of it, that he never managed to figure out that they had this two-tier system that they were all, there were certain meetings that he's been following the city council for what, three, four years and had never managed to figure out that there was his meetings. And what they don't seem to be getting is if Chris didn't figure it out, then no one figured it out. You're making a choice to have people not know about this meeting. And Councillor Harris, who's the chair of the committee at no time in the meeting, did she explain why she chose to do that meeting and at a regular time and why she chose to not announce it online. They never even attempted to explain that. All they said is we're not legally required to do that. So there was this underlying assumption that transparent means doing the bare minimum that you're legally required to do. And you don't even need to explain why you don't do anything beyond that. So I would challenge Councillor Harris to change that attitude and to say, we're gonna make, tell the public about what we're doing because we want the public to know what we're doing regardless of what we're legally required to do. And the reason I say that is I know Chris has speculated she'll be running for mayor maybe, but I think what's gonna happen in the next election is there are gonna be a lot of people who aren't paying attention now. They're going to wanna find out what's going on before they vote. They're gonna go online and they're gonna get their information from channel 781 news. And somebody's gonna say, don't listen to those guys. That's a biased source. They're a bunch of communists. They wanna plant free free light bulbs all over the town. Like, But there is no other source. There is no complete record of the city council. And we tried to create one and, and now we know we can't. We're, we're gonna to have to, unless we can find volunteers to go check that bulletin board every two days and volunteers to, record all these meetings that could be any day on the week, we can't do a complete record because the city council doesn't want us to. They don't want you to know what they're doing. And I recommend they change that attitude because otherwise when the election comes on, people are only getting their news from us. And if you're not okay with that, you need to fix it now. And it's not something that should take years to fix because there's the money the mayor put in that fund. There's already a precedent for how you can make all the meetings two-way virtual because the clerk's already done that. So let's just do it already. <laughs> so sorry, that's a, that was a lot to say, but this is my main thing with Waltham data. And I feel like this was a big setback. And there was a tone in this meeting like, ha ha, uh, Chris Gamble so foolish. He thought we broke our own rules, but we didn't. And they completely missed the point of what this means about transparency and Waltham. So, James? Sorry, but one second. For the record, I've watched almost every single city council meeting for four and a half years. Okay. And he didn't figure it out. And they think that's funny. They think that's funny that he didn't figure it out. And and the whole meeting, get, Councillor Harris shook her head at one point. Um, Councillor LaFosse made, said something about like, well, he's here every every week to record meetings. He easily could have checked the bulletin board, but obviously didn't know about the bulletin board. And it's like they're gloating about it. Sorry, James, go ahead. Yeah, it, <clears throat> several things. One, acting as if like that's anything other than an indictment of how opaque their process is is like you know it requires you to be incredibly credulous watching this to not just un understand that they are lying to you period that's all it comes down to and if i could share my screen i have a picture of the one place outside of city hall that you can actually like find these postings because they're not legally obligated to put them anywhere else and apparently it's an insurmountable lift to post things up onto the city website at a time that isn't 4.30 on a Thursday. It's just, it's, it's so if you want to go stand in the parking lot, and like, and on the curb to read this thing, like, I, I yeah, it's, it's deeply frustrating. It, it belies, like, a deep cynicism about, like, 
what their role is as counselors even. And th like they're constantly trying to do damage control. So in that meeting, the solicitor was like spoon feeding to them that, oh, uh, like a, a reason why the city chooses to prioritize posting physical copies is because we're just so worried about people who don't have internet access not being able to attend these meetings. And I'm gonna say that's a load of crap. They don't, care. They don't want anyone attending these meetings. They don't care, period. And like, it's a very nice, cozy rationalization, but that's what it is, a rationalization. Yeah, I think that's an important point that James brought up. It's like, you know, if you're really concerned about people without uh, internet access, why wouldn't you expand internet access? Why wouldn't you, you know, send out more mailers around these things? There's a million things you can do. Uh, and the city, you know, the, the word transparency gets thrown out a lot as, as if it's a buzzword. And it, it really means nothing to a lot of folks, but it means something to me. And uh, the city council just lacks it in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah, there was actually, Mc Councillor McLaughlin made these comments where first he reacted like you had attacked, you know, you had said the city clerk was incompetent, which obviously you hadn't, you didn't propose any reason why it wasn't. So he was kind of standing up for Joe Vizard, who we all know Chris Gamble's the biggest Joe Vizard fan <laughs> in town. But in the process of that, he kept pointing out that it had the wrong date, that, that Chris got the wrong date for when he thought the meeting was. So basically he's pointing out, you know, uh, uh, you can't complain about our secret meeting because you didn't know when it was because it was a secret. Like <laughs> it was just the attitudes in this meeting, and 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 just missing the point that that it's your job to tell people what you're doing, and and the whole attitude here of of that this whole thing is about Chris making some horrible mistake because he didn't know the rules when you never told him the rules. So this is the point where I should ask for volunteers to go check the bulletin board at City Hall every two days and then be available to shoot all these meetings on a moment's notice. So if you want to volunteer for that, get in touch. But to be honest, I wish the City Council would just get its act together finally, because we already know they can, they already did it. They're choosing not to go back to doing it that way. So we will be back next week um with the full city council meeting and any other meetings um that the city council sees fit to let us know are happening <laughs> thank you very much james and chris uh see everyone later bye everyone